There's a video going viral out of Australia showing several police officers arresting a man for no reason. Apparently, he had no business being a few hundred meters from his own home. Apparently, he had gone out for lunch, sat down, took off his mask to have a cigarette, and the police came in, threw him to the ground, cuffed him and arrested him, calling him a perpetrator. A woman who's holding up some kind of sandwich, I don't know, is filming saying, that's my mate. We just came out to get lunch. And they're like, no, he has no business being here. And he wasn't wearing a mask. And she was like, he was having a cigarette and he's with me and I'm eating food. Doesn't matter. Australia is a full on fascistic police state. And a special shout out to our good friends over at Quillette for defending the state, smack talking me because I called them out and criticized their government. Actually, I never even said anything about them. Quillette wants to defend the state. This is Claire Lehman. They used to be intellectual dark web, challenging authoritarianism, claiming they stand up for free thought when in actuality they defend the police state, cracking down, putting the boot on people's necks, and they defend the camps that are being built in Australia with relocatable cabins for those suspected of having COVID. But don't worry, they say no one, no one's being brought there. I'm not even kidding. Some the guy actually, I don't remember the guy's name, actually tweeted, no one's being brought to these. What do you mean? There's videos of people at the camps. There's videos of people being taken from their homes for hotel quarantine. We'll see if it gets to the point where they start bringing people into these camps. But I got to say, probably. Now, my friends, to the United States. Massachusetts police union says dozens of state troopers have quit over Governor Charlie Baker's COVID vaccine mandate. You see, the reason why I intro this segment talking about what's going on in Australia is because we can see two things happening here. I don't know for the Australian police, but in the U.S., it seems there are many officers who are resigning rather than enforce this garbage. There are many cops still on uh, with their departments in places like New York that are refusing to enforce this garbage. But the other thing you need to realize, when these officers resign, the officers that remain will be just like the ones in Australia. Ma'am, ma'am, you have no reason to be outside your home, so I'm going to beat you with this billy club and then arrest you. And that's where we're heading, because the good cops are quitting. We got this story from out of Massachusetts, but wait, there's more. They want to they vax mandate on these guys. Over in Los Angeles, these officers are suing over the vaccine mandate as police across California threaten to resign. We got this one. Three state troopers in Vermont resign after accusations they faked COVID vaccination cards. Vermont State Police say the ex-troopers are under investigation by the FBI. State Police Colonel Matthew Birmingham said the allegations were reprehensible. No, I think your crackpot authoritarianism is reprehensible. Hey, we got more. Veteran police officer resigns over vaccine mandate in chronically understaffed department. San Jose Reserve Officer resigns over COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Here's this one. Entire police department resigns in Missouri. Well, that's a start. Look, I've been saying abolish the police for some time, but let me explain exactly why. I mean, some of you may not understand, but I'll make it simple. I think police departments are typically good things. I think they come with a lot of bad things, but they're a net positive, right? Not a fan of how these systems operate. But to be fair, I, I, I should say this, I should clarify. I'm not a fan of the problems we face with departments and issues of accountability, but I've been to other countries, overwhelmingly net positive. Individual officers tend to be good people and it's a crummy job, but it's, it's, it's a crummy job. That's, that's, that's the best way I can put it. Now, I would say this, in a normal circumstance, I think police departments, sheriff's department, it's all great. They're, they're good things. We, they, we have public accountability. We have protest. You can challenge these systems. Private security, not so much. But what happens when the only cops who resign are the good cops? Well, then all those bad apples you've been crying about on the left, you're going to get a big old bowl of bad rotten apples. Ain't nothing you can do about it anymore. That's the problem. So if that's my choice, I'm watching the cops of principle resign, quite literally saying you cannot force the mandate on us and we will quit if need be. OK, then what are my options? No good cops, just bad cops or no cops at all. Hey, it's a pretty simple choice, right? This is what I've been saying to conservatives. 
If you keep saying just blindly defend the police, well, they're going to put the boot on your neck. I mean, the good cops will resign. Same is true for the military. People are saying like, oh, people in the military will never, you know, uh, ri- will never strike a- an American citizen. They'll never, uh, you know, I-, I don't know. I-, I don't want the right words. I don't want to say shoot. But I mean, like we've had these conversations in the Tim Cast IRL podcast where people chat like you don't understand the military, Tim. The, the, the you know, the men and s- men and women in uniform are not going to ever, you know, take up arms against the American people. I'm like, yes, they will, because the good officers are all resigning. You may see uh, some, uh, 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 you know, non-officers. I'm not a military guy, so I don't, you know, I don't have the lingo. But they'll, they'll maybe either be forced to do it by their legal orders, or they could just be court-martialed for defying these orders. But you need to understand, I'm not talking about some, some su- superior officer going to the military guy and being like, see that woman with her child? Shoot him. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But what if they say, these people are, are infected, quarantine, do not let them out of this quarantine camp. Well, then they're going to be like, okay, especially if all of the good officer, uh, the good, uh, all the officers of moral, uh, uh, good moral standing are resigning. We've seen these stories. You take a look at what happened in, in, uh, at the Capitol. They had all of these National Guard out with these fence up. And they're like, I don't know. I don't know. It's supposed to be a public institution. We're supposed to be allowed to walk into these buildings. Instead, you know, we hear stories from like Jack Posobiec, who works in D.C. And he's like, I got to show my papers now if I want to get to my job. And these National Guardsmen just go along with it. Now, there's still several degrees between that and, you know, shooting American citizens. What happens when you start getting protests? And we will. What happens when regular people say, no, I refuse to show you my papers? Do you think these enlisted guys are going to be like, oh, I'm going to ignore this and let you into a secure zone. No, it's not going to be as as simple as you think. It's not going to be a moment where there's an American citizen saying, I love this country and I believe in it. And, and the, spirit, the commanding officer is going to be like, <laughs> we're in control now. Shoot him or else you'll be court martialed. No, it's going to be like a big riotous mob of people being like no mandates, no quarantine. And they're going to be like, we don't want to have to be doing this riot control, but these are rioters and they're dangerous and they're armed. What do we do? You got to protect the the, the facility, the capital, the nation's capital. And then it's going to be reluctance. It's not going to be overt. More importantly, when it comes to these officers resigning, and I've met many of them who are like, I won't do it. I don't want to be in this anymore. You're going to have wokeness and quarantines. And so when I talk about civil war stuff and I say, I think we're in it. It's, it's not, mu- there, there's some kinetic skirmishes happening, meaning like, you know, the dude in Portland who gets shot and killed and things like that, or a proud boy got shot recently. Mostly it's psychological and it's manipulation and financial resources and things like that. But I'll, I'll tell you, my friends, it's not going to be, you know, people just assume everything is going to be like it always was. It was always so simple, but it's going to be something different. The right says the left will never win because the right has the guns. You're wrong. All of the institutions controlled by the left, they are armed to the teeth and armed better than you. Within reason. You see, the military, they've got all the fanciest of the fancy weapons. And a lot of them wouldn't be effective in any kind of urban conflict. You're not going to fire, fire a cruise missile at a city you're trying to occupy. Uh, maybe in Afghanistan where you don't care about the city. Sure, like, you know, Joe Biden just did an airstrike on a family. Um, but you've got these officers and cops resigning. In the event of any kind of true conflict, the establishment, law enforcement, and militaristic institutions are slowly being dominated by wokeness, complacency, or outright support for the left, the leftist ideas. And so there may be many more right wingers armed to the teeth. Okay, I understand that. You're not going to go up against, or I shouldn't say, you're foolish to believe that we are headed towards this period where it's going to be like Antifa versus the Proud Boys. Now, I'm not saying anything like that's going to happen. The government is well armed, well equipped, and they are uh, they're ideologically purging every department, every branch of the military. So let me explain to you what this is. Massachusetts Police Union is trying to negotiate. They're trying. They're saying we shouldn't have to get the vax mandate. There should be weekly testing options. What's happening now, whether intentional or not, is it's it's not relevant. Is that all of these police departments? are basically drawing a line in the sand where anyone who is more independently, you know, minded, more liberty minded will leave. 
Why? I would. I tell people to resign. So think about what remains. You'll end up with nothing but complacent drones who say, I don't care. Just do as you're told. You'll get we'll, we'll end up being like Australia. And we're going in that direction. Now, the difference is in the United States, we are armed to the teeth. And I think many regular Americans aren't going to just lay back and accept a lot of this stuff. But maybe the reality is they will. Now, in blue states, they do. And they crave it. In red states, they don't. You see, that's the big difference between us and many other countries. The red states have their own their sovereignty. And they'll say, no, we're not doing it. We'll say, we're a sanctuary now. And we reject your, your, your orders. Already, many Republican states, I, I believe, are filing lawsuits against Joe Biden over his vaccine mandate, his national vaccine mandate saying, you know, he, he said, if you have 100 employees or more, then you got to mandate vaccination or testing. And they're like, no, we don't screw off. You can't do that. The, the, the federal government does not have the control in the United States like many other governments, many other countries. But when you see the police start resigning, refusing to adhere to this stuff, then who's going to be left when regular people resist the vaccine mandates? No, I think you'll end up seeing videos like this. Ezra Levant says, Nazis, it's a man being pinned to the ground. There's a woman eating a sandwich. The guy's like, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a block from my house having a cigarette. I was getting food. They don't care. Australia has gone full fascist. And you know, it's funny. If you're not, so I was making the comments about, you know, Claire Lehman. She used to be like intellectual dark web. And then she's become Kathy Newman. She basically just takes people's tweets and then exaggerates them. And it's 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 really quite amazing to see the pathetic spinelessness, unless this was always her intent and Quillette's intent. You know, I remember I, 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 we, I was at an event, uh, 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 met her and I was a big fan. Quillette was challenging, you know, wokeness. They were fairly moderate. They weren't staunch conservative. They were just like, hey, these ideas are, are, are nuts. Then Australia started building the quarantine camps. Australia has several quarantine camps, and right now they're predominantly for people who are traveling into the country who they're going to quarantine. So that's arbitrary quarantine, right? You come in the country and they say, you got to go to the camp. There's a video of a man saying they're coming out to feed us. They bring these little carts full of food. And they're like, it's like when, the, when, you, when, the, when you go to the dog kennel and they shake the food and all the dogs run out. Yeah, wow. Apparently a woman was try- took her mask off to sip a tea. And the police came and said, don't ever do that again. Now, there are other videos where a man is at his house and a quarantine squad comes to his house and the police come and they say, you're going to indefinite quarantine. You've tested positive. He said, OK, I guess. And then just got on indefinite quarantine. And they just, OK, wow, that's a spineless group of people, a spineless population. Maybe not everybody in Australia, but in the United States, we have a lot of people who would do the same. No joke. So I'm not trying to single out Australia. But when I call this out, what do I get? Quillette says that I'm exaggerating. The, they say that uh, Claire Lehman says that, you know, in, in Australia, our death count is so much lower than America's. And that brings me to a lot of these stories. We see where it's like in Trump counties. I mean, that's probably like that, that, that's a trending story right now on Twitter. In Trump counties, m- most of the, the uh, you know, COVID hospitalizations are occurring. Yes, Because people choose freedom over security. That's the natural result. What do we see? Well, for organizations like Quillette, here's what I think. Here's what I think about Claire Lehman and Quillette, right? And I definitely want to make sure you you know who they are and we can shout them out because we need to make, we we, we need, we need examples of collaboration, of collaborators. And this really will help you understand how like Nazi Germany came to pass. This is supposed to be a group of people who are writing and resisting the establishment and authoritarianism. But as soon as the state comes in with the billy club, starts beating people over the head, they drop to their knees and say, just tell us what to say. And they feign opposition while actually wink, wink, supporting everything they do. And that's what you can expect to happen in the United States. As we start getting closer and closer towards, you know, this this degree to which we see Australia, when if slash when we start seeing this stuff, which we probably won't uh, for a few reasons. I mean, I, sh- I shouldn't say probably, but I think we might not. We're heading in that direction, but the different states are going to make it very difficult for that kind of phenomenon to emerge. I know Australia has those states too, but if we look at like New South Wales and I think Victoria where it's really, really bad, then it's going to be similar here in the US. Like New York and California will be really, really bad. New York's already really bad. And um, that's where we can see these things happen. 
if, as that start stuff starts to happen, you know, we as Americans are more independently minded. But I do think in these blue areas, people will just fall in line. And you'll eventually start to see those who once opposed it slowly say, yeah, but I'll tell you this. For me, it was a bit of the opposite. When we first started this, I said, hey, guys, you know, 15 days slow the spread. I get it. Wear a mask. I got no problem wearing a mask. You know, you go outside, you got a mask on, it's whatever. Like, we're going to get through this, all right? And then as we come to realize that this is just endless, that 15 days to slow, 15 days slow the spread is turning to two years. And when they say it's just a mask, it's just so we get the vaccine, the vaccine comes out and they say, oh, it's just, it's, you know, just wear a mask anyway. And if, oh, if you don't want to get the vaccine, just get tested. Okay, now don't get tested. Now you get, no matter what happens, every single time they say, look, it's really simple. It's easier just to do X than Y. And if you do X, then you don't have to do Z. And then you do it. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, now do Z. And you got to do Y anyway. That's what keeps happening. Every inch you give, they take a mile. So for me, I've come out and be like, you know what, man, at this point, I think it's all a bit of a mistake. We need to, re- we need to resort to freedom and, re- and accept the risks. If I, if I choose to walk into the woods, I accept the risks of tripping, falling, or getting lost. Okay, we are, if you want to live in a city where you have someone directing your every move and telling you where to work and you live in a full-on communist utopia, by all means, that's for you. I don't care. I'm not going to go to your city. But you take a look at, you know, Australia, and they're scared. These people are scared. They would rather sell out defending state oppression than risk their own necks because they're losers. And you know what? The way I see it is these are the people who would chop down the tree so that no one may sit beneath its shade than to plant a tree whose shade they know they will never sit beneath. That's the old proverb, right? Proverb. A society grows great when they say old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit beneath. Meaning they plant a tree and then when their children grow up, there's a beautiful tree with shade to sit beneath. You know, I thought about this one day when I was in New York and I saw these bridges, you know, I was crossing the Williamsburg Bridge and I'm just like this massive construct required such immense power. The forging of the steel, the mining of the materials, the maintenance, the mass. It's remarkable how humans were able to pull that off. And we just walk across it for free. We don't think about the price. We don't think about the labor. We don't think about what it took to build such a thing. It's just there. And that's a problem. Because while a society may grow great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit beneath, within two generations, a society grows weak When these individuals take for granted the shade that was just always there and no one worked for. And a generation emerges that does not seek to plant any more trees. Why? Because I have my tree. And then they say, you know what? I had my shade. I'll chop that tree down and use the wood for bowling pins. And then the next children grow up and there is no shade to sit beneath. And they say to themselves, if only there were a tree for which I could sit beneath, this hot sun would not be burning my skin. So they plant a tree whose shade they know they will never sit beneath. You see how it goes. Hard times make strong men. Strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make hard times. And it seems like that's where we're headed right now. These police officers resigning are doing the right thing by standing up for what they believe in. And I think it will ultimately lead to police forces that are corrupt as they come. And that's why I say abolish the police, because I'm not going to sit here and wait around for all of the good cops to resign. So we get nothing but bad apples and collaborators with the state. Sheesh. Imagine people like Quillette being cops. These are the people who would stand up for you and defend your rights until it became an inconvenience for them. There's a story I was told in young about Youngstown, Ohio during Occupy. They said that initially during the Occupy, the police and the firefighters were marching with the protesters. Until one day, the city decided to negotiate with the police, give them what they wanted, and the cops turned around and started arresting the protesters and corralling them and saying, we got what we wanted. You're out. That's what you get. Collaborators. Yeah, they'll say, here's what I want. Give it to me. And then, you know, I'll do whatever you say. That's people like Quillette. That's people like Claire Lehman. That's what you have to watch out for. I imagine it's only a matter of time before we get nuked off of YouTube. So we set up TimCast.com. I imagine it's only a matter of time before we get nuked off of there as well. But I I will tell you this. I will not be defending the state. And in fact, 
I used to defend the cops. Now I'm like, nah, get rid of them. I will not go down the same path as, as corrupt and pathetic losers like, like the people at Quillette and Claire Lehman to defend the building of camps for any reason. I get it. They're scared. Look what the cops in Australia are doing. Yeah, great. If that happens in America, you can come kick my door in. I will not be defending your actions. You can ban me from all the platforms. You can take away everything I have. I would rather just go fishing down by the river, go sleep in my van, than ever sell out my values and support this kind of crackpot BS fascism. So the cops were resigning. I, you have my respect. And we'll see what happens. You know, Australia is about as big as the U.S. It's a bit different. The, cent- the center of the country is it's, it's, it's not the same in terms of our topography, our, our um, geography. So we have a really dense Midwest. Australia doesn't so much and they have less people, but similar amounts of land. A lot of people say that Australia gave up their guns. I don't think that's the issue at all. I do not see a circumstance in the United States where American citizens literally go head to head with cops and kind of any kind of armed conflict like that. It's possible. It'll happen in pockets, maybe, but I don't think that's the issue. The issue is your culture. And Australia is a culture of what's the right word? Like NPCs, lemmings, do as you're told. It always turns out well. But history has told us it doesn't turn out well when you just do as you're told. There needs to be an opposition to centralized authority to prevent that authority from killing people en masse. Now, maybe Australia is not going to go into that direction. Sure, I don't know for sure. But they already have camps. How long? And and these are massive camps. How long until they say, oh, you were protesting, potentially a super spreader event. The camp is this way, sir. It'll only be for two weeks just to be safe. And then it's not two weeks. You don't get on the, the truck. You don't get on the train car to watch this man in Australia just board this, this van. I'm going to indefinite detention. Hopefully it's a mix up. Good luck. You'll need it. Here in the US, I'm out in the middle of nowhere. And we're, we're, we're working on just building out stuff in the middle of nowhere. And that's our plan. And uh, I think we have a great government. I think we have a great country, and I think there are corrupt elements that are usurping it and taking it over. I don't think we have a good political class. I don't think we have good politicians. We have a couple. But the system of government we built was brilliant, and it's, it's shielding us right now from what we're seeing around the world. Let us defend the Constitution and stand up for what we believe in. Otherwise, that'll be you on the ground. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.